In an ideal IPM world, we'd be able to sample for pests and confirm their presence before pesticides are applied. But in the real world, unfortunately, sampling methods are frequently cumbersome, time-consuming, and damaging to turf. As a result, preventive pesticide applications are sometimes made unnecessarily when pests aren't present because it isn't possible to easily find out whether they're really there or not. Sampling is especially tricky for white grubs such as black turf grass atinius, Japanese beetles, chafers, and other related insects. That's because the damaging stages of these pests, the white grub stage, such as the ones in this photo, live underneath the soil surface where they can't be seen. And nothing you can do to bring grubs to the surface, whether it's soap solutions or pesticide applications or even in extreme cases that we've heard of, actually electrical shocks, can make them surface so that you can tell whether they are there or not. Some superintendents rely on the presence of animals, birds, skunks, or even armadillos to alert them to the presence of white grubs. The problem with this approach is that sometimes animals dig for earthworms or caterpillars, or sometimes for nothing at all. So signs of animals digging or birds pecking should be a red flag that grubs might be present, but it isn't a confirmation that they're actually there. You can also monitor for the adult or the beetle stages of white grubs on the assumption that once you see the adults, like this mass chafer beetle here, which you see flying around at night times in June or July, or these black turf grass atinius and aphodius beetle adults here, which you can see walking around on the surface of greens during the summer months. Once you see these adults, you can assume that larvae will soon be following. The only problem with this approach is that sometimes, even though adults are present, they never lay eggs for reasons that we don't understand, and you never get an infestation. So the adults can give you a false warning about the presence of grubs. In yet a different approach, some superintendents monitor turf conditions closely and wait until they see what looks like the early signs of grub feeding damage before treatment. The risk with this approach is that grub feeding damage, uh, in the early stages it could be small patches of wilted or discolored turf, can also be the early stages of a disease such as anthracnose or summer patch, or can be a, an indicator of dry conditions or salty conditions. So is there any way to effectively and efficiently sample for white grubs without destroying too much turf in the process? In the course of doing field research on white grub control, we've come up with a relatively simple method that may be of use, particularly on greens, where digging around underneath the turf surface can cause unacceptable damage. All you'll need is a knife and your observational skills. The idea is that what we're going to do is first locate an area on the green where you suspect grubs might be feeding. We're then going to cut into the surface so that we can get a look underneath it where the grubs feed, but we're going to do it as gently as possible so there's as little sign of damage as possible when we're done. I like to use a straight edge, a block of wood or a ruler to guide me as I cut into the turf. You'll start by cutting a straight line about six inches long into the turf. You want to go about two inches deep with the knife. If turf roots are a little bit longer than that, you may need to cut a little deeper. You then cut two horizontal lines on either end so that what you end up with is what looks like the capital letter I. Now you can start to peel back the turf one section at a time, like you're opening a box. Keep your eye out for grubs in the process and remember that if they're newly hatched or if they're black turf grass atinius grubs, they can be very small, less than a quarter of an inch in length. Sometimes the grubs will just pop right out, making your job easy. These are black turf grass atinius grubs. But sometimes you'll need to scrape around with your knife to see if there are any grubs hiding underneath the soil. When you're done looking, write down how many grubs you've seen at that location and then carefully fold the turf back into position. 
This method leaves very little evidence that you've sampled in this location. To make sure that you're getting a good idea of the grub situation, we suggest that you sample in three locations per green and that you sample at least three greens. Pick spots where you see some evidence of turf damage, small patches of yellowing or wilted or even brown turf. If you don't see any grubs in any of the nine locations that you look at, you can be relatively sure that grub populations are low or non-existent and that treatment probably isn't required at this point. You will need, however, to figure out what did cause the damage. To keep on top of grubs, it's a good idea to come back and inspect each green about once a week during the grub season. If you see any signs of feeding damage, then start the sampling process immediately. Grub infestations can develop quickly, as you know, so it's important to keep to a weekly monitoring schedule. On the other hand, if you find grubs in one or more of the locations where you sample, then insecticide applications are probably warranted. For more information on management of white grubs, see the links associated with this video.